Okay, so understanding the difference between strategies and tactics is huge, and tactics often compete against one another instead of supporting the whole. Without an overarching strategy, you're gonna have a marketing campaign, right? Another marketing campaign. They're probably gonna clash because there's no strategic link. Now, let me give you a quick example of ditch digging. All right, you're gonna, you're gonna dig a ditch from location A to location B. So you start digging away, okay? Digging, 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 digging. And without any strategy, what's gonna happen? Zigzag ditch, eventually get to location B, we hope, or get to China, right? Get somewhere, right? Here's the thing. You're probably gonna get the longest, hardest, most ineffective route from A to B. Now, a tactical thinker might also dig away, pop up out of the trench now and then and go, whoops, course correction. I gotta dig back over here, right? The strategic thinker would place flags along the route between A to B, delegate the digging to somebody else, make sure that those flags are high enough that the person can see them within the trench and go off and do a most valuable activity instead of digging a frickin' trench, okay? Here's the thing. Planning is uncomfortable to us. We like to shoot from the hip. This is why so few companies ever get to a million bucks in revenue. They don't say, here's how I want to get there, here's the plan, break it down into details. If I want to sell 10,000 widgets, or even 10 widgets, right, I've got to figure out what the conversion is. Maybe I need to have a list of, for 10 widgets, I need to have a list of 10,000 names. How am I going to get 10,000 names? Well, I'm going to do social media, I'm going to do maybe a postcard mailing, you know, I'm going to do some teleseminars, I'm going to do some webinars, I'm going to get X number of leads, right? Then, how are you going to pull them through your product path? Do any of you guys have a product path? I find, yeah, it's usually like five hands in like a room of 100. Very few people have a product path. Our prospect starts here, then, oh, right about here they become a customer. Then they buy again and again and again. And as they move through the product path, they're getting increasing value. They're having a better and better experience. It's not like you're trying to shovel stuff down their throat. You're not. You're giving them a better and better experience, but that requires some strategy, right? We're going to sell them here and here and here and here. And you know what? When you promote to different people, they're going to come in at different points in your product path. They're not necessarily going to all enter up here, right? Depending on where you're marketing. This is the year of the channel. You guys have got to be doing at least three different channels. Yeah, you're, you're all doing email. Do you guys know what the email open rates are now? It's heinous. Yeah, not good. Yeah, they were 26% last year. Email open rates now are eight. So don't say, woohoo, I'm going to do an email campaign. Okay, well, 8% of people are even going to freaking open them. Okay? Of the 8%, whoa, there goes my list. Of the 8% who opened them, right, how many are going to abandon within 30 seconds or less? Uh, probably 75%. Right? Oh, 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 and now it's a sliver. Okay? And then how many of those guys are actually going to read through the entire offer and buy? Whoa, it's really small now. So you can't just rely on email marketing. You know, you've got to look at remnant ad space, you know, radio, et cetera, and use blog talk radio until you figure it out, until you get your whole radio mojo rocking, you know, then spend for the airwaves. But also, postcards, postcardmania.com. Check those guys out. They write the copy for you. All right, cool. Little transition there. Should be on painkillers, am not, okay? Just for the record, thought I might be a little too spacey if I was on painkillers, so I'm like, out, 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 keep talking. All right, I want you working on the business and not in it. A lack of long-term strategic planning results in way too much urgent, time-wasting, resource-draining, busy work. You will implement disconnected, time-wasting tactics in the short term that will take you off track, I guarantee. This is a huge reason that many business owners never get to seven digits, okay? So, look, here's the thing. I mean, did you, any of you guys actually learn how to build a business? I mean, I never learned. I was just like, woo, here's some spaghetti, let's throw it against the wall and see if it sticks, right? You know, you know your area of brilliance, but most of you guys don't actually know how to build a business. I didn't either. I mean, I learned by doing it. So left to our own devices, we'll typically build a business the hard way. Right, we'll work at the tactical level. So here's the thing. Our motto has got to be, I do what I do best, I do what I do best, and I create strategies for the rest. And here's the thing. Without a strategy, you can't teach your team to implement. People will not know what to do, because the Vulcan mind meld, it only works on TV. Okay, the Vulcan mind meld doesn't work here. 
All right, let's keep going. Now, getting away from your business for a few days to conduct effective strategy. Effective strategic planning is absolutely essential. You're not going to do it when you're just hanging out in business. You've got to get away. You've got to get away with people of like mind and do your strategy planning or it won't happen. All right? That's how you get the burnout bug, by just running, 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 a little, little hamster on his wheel. Okay? Most people don't have a natural aptitude for strategy. If you don't, you have to get strategic about it. You have to get help from a mentor who knows how to do strategy. Okay, so quick recap, mistake number three, caring becomes control. Caring becomes control, actually mistake number one in your cute handout. Caring becomes control. Number two, tactics versus strategy. This is my favorite one, and this is where we're gonna go into the bestest, bestest part of the evening. I'm quivering with anticipation. Are you? You're quivering. I can see she's like, her papers are shaking. What's going to happen next? All right, good. You guys, you have to have fun, okay? You do. Otherwise, one of my friends, Andrea, she has two sayings that are awesome. One is, um, if it ain't fun, it's done. And the other one is, um, honey, always take the high road. There's never any traffic. <laughs> Now, I look forward to the day when the high road is totally packed with traffic. How great would that be? You'd be like, woohoo, traffic jam. Hey, what are you doing over there? You know, everyone's like talking to each other, you know? That'd be cool. It's like, Christine, you're going ADD on me again. I know, I have it. Diet, exercise, meditation. That's how you manage ADD. Frenetic versus formula. Thank you. Kevin, what does this say? Frenetic versus formula. Very nice. The biggest reason entrepreneurs get consumed by their businesses and never make it to multiple millions is because they are frantic, scattered, tactical, disorganized, just not if this ever sounds like you, <laughs> unleveraged, inefficient. In order to create the time, money, freedom, fun, okay, that you want in your business, you need a measured, grounded, step-by-step, -step, strategic, organized, highly, highly effective plan. So you can get that leverage, you can work less and make a lot more. Okay, tried and true, easy to follow, well-researched, well-established, step-by-step method, a formula for building a business. A formula, better yet, for building a seven-figure business. And it works while you're trying to build a lifestyle business, the one that you want to have around you forever and ever because you love it. But with a lifestyle business, make sure you have your magic number, right? Maybe you want to, you know, never sell your business at all, but you want to make sure that you make two million bucks a year. Great, that's your magic number. When do you want to make that magic number? Okay, that would work for you. You could live on two million a year, right? So, you know, maybe in year three or something, you want to be at two million. You know, you, you've got to have that freedom finish line. Maybe if you're building your business to sell, like one of our clients, she wants to sell her business, baby food business, in five years for 25 million. That changes the entire way she designs her business, right? It becomes all about distribution, right? It changes things. We're going to get to that in a sec. So whether it's a lifestyle business or build or sell, it doesn't matter, okay? You still need a formula for that business you can sell for millions. You need a formula to find and cultivate those often awesome team members, and you need it for consistently reliable revenue. If you don't have consistently reliable revenue, you have massive amounts of stress. Okay? Frantic, frenetic versus formula. Right? The surefire solution to avoiding that overwhelmed business failure founder burnout, seven-figure business formula. Woo! We're done with the first page. Give yourself a pen in the back. Woo! We're done with the first page. All right.